took your test that's done with chapter 15 is done we're gonna move into chapter 16 we're only going to cover a couple things in chapter 16 the things I think are important that being the Emancipation Proclamation um, and uh, Sherman's March to the Sea also Gettysburg don't forget that so a couple of the chapters and uh, maybe a quiz here and there but no test at the end of this chapter uh, let's talk about the Emancipation Proclamation Emancipation Proclamation uh, was one of the biggest transformations of the Civil War, considering the fact that Abraham Lincoln decided that the war was going to be about saving the Union. He was kind of looking or reaching to move something else in the middle of this war uh, to kind of refocus, and, and that was the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, Lincoln first informed his cabinet that he was going to uh, issue the Emancipation Proclamation on July 22nd, 1862. And State Secretary of State Seward kind of told him that this is not an opportune time. He says, what you need to do is wait till we have a big victory and then we could do this. Uh, many of the people in his cabinet believed that this was uh, Lincoln acting on a desperate administration, just desperate times because he did not believe that the Union was going to actually win this whole civil war. But uh, at Antietam, they found themselves in a stalemate, but enough of a victory that Lincoln decided that uh, this was the opportune time to actually um, give the Emancipation Proclamation and get that document uh, signed in as an executive order. Um, let's look at this. Uh, Antietam would become one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War, as well as one of the bloodiest battles that ever happened on American soil. Um, even though it was a stalemate, um, they figured that they, they, they had enough of an advantage and enough of a win there to actually go ahead and uh, use this as a opportune time to invoke this executive order that would change the lives of over 400 million people. Uh, in both the North and South, the loss of so many lives led so many to question why Americans were even fighting against each other. It kind of uh, kind of gave the idea that the the North, the Union, could not defeat the Confederacy, and uh, that destroying slavery was the biggest part or biggest uh, what is it uh, part of momentum biggest interjection into the war that could actually make the Union kind of like win this war. The institution of slavery gave the Confederacy an advantage over the Union. You have to look at it this way. And why do you say that? Well, let's look at this. Okay, the Confederacy, if you have 4 million slaves working on the fields, that means that a whole bunch of other white men, white soldiers, were able to go fight. If there was nobody working the fields and the white people had to actually go back and work their own land, well, that would take a lot of people off the fronts of the, of the war. And uh, Lincoln knew this, as did his uh, advisory cabinet. Uh, slave labor kept the southern agrarian economy going. And while this whole war was going, the, the economy kind of was still working because it was based on agrarianism. It was based on cotton. And, and without first destroying slavery, well, then it was going to continue for a long, long time. Uh, although some members of Lincoln's party urged him to allow African and American men to fight on the side of the Union Army, the president remained hesitant to even offend the border states. Now, if we remember about the border states, who were they again? Uh, if you said, let's see, Missouri, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, and Maryland, right? Okay border states, which were allowed to keep their slaves as long as they were making uh, growing food and stuff for the Union Army. Five days after Antietam, Lincoln shifted the whole focus of the war. He issued a decree that emancipated or freed all Confederate slaves. Lincoln had purposely waited to submit a draft of the Emancipation Proclamation to his cabinet because he knew the timing had to be right for such a dramatic move. It committed the government and armed forces of the U.S. 
to liberate enslaved people in all of the rebel states. Okay, so this Emancipation Proclamation was going to free the four million slaves, but that didn't make them citizens, though. Remember that. Also, by freeing these slaves, they still had to escape the plantation. Because just because they were free, do you think the southern plantation owners were going to uh, actually listen to a decree put on by Abraham Lincoln, the guy that actually they believe started the whole Civil War because of him getting elected? So when you look at that, excuse me, when you look at that, you have to say to yourself that Maybe this Emancipation Proclamation was sort of a strategy for Lincoln to actually attempt to bolster the Union Army into victory. That's my opinion. Sometimes I, I don't know anymore. Okay. The final draft of the proclamation allowed the Union to accept freed slaves into its fighting forces also. So if these enslaved African Americans were able to actually get from the south to the north, they could join the, the fight against the south, and many of them did. And But which funny thing is, is they put them all in their own kind of like battalions, and uh, they didn't fight really alongside the white guys, but by themselves. The proclamation did not apply to slaves, like I said, in the Union slaveholding border states. And those are Maryland, Missouri, Kentucky, oh, I forgot Delaware, and uh, West Virginia. They didn't mention Maryland, but I guess they're looking at it at a different area. So, Lincoln feared that emancipating slaves in all the Union-controlled territories might cause border states to actually go back and join the Confederacy. Because remember, they never seceded from the, from the Union because they were allowed to keep their slaves regardless of what was going on. All right, so Lincoln feared, you know, that the border states were kind of like very volatile and that, that at any moment they could go back to the south, which would give them five states, more men to actually fight in the Union Army. And when you think about this, when you have these border states, the north had free access through those states into the south. So they were able to go through this, these states without any fighting, collecting supplies of food, stuff for their armies, and they actually didn't have to fight until they were on the southern end of the border of that state. So that was a big advantage for the, uh, the uh, Union. Now, Lincoln orders this Emancipation Proclamation as an executive order, okay, an executive order. And what is an executive order? Well, it's an order that the president can invoke that shows his power by directing the federal government uh, on what he wants during a time of chaos. So if you, if you think about now, you know, this, this is chaos. We're in this quarantine state with this coronavirus. Uh, Trump, has he, you know, go look in the newspaper. Has it, Trump actually given out any executive orders? It, back when he wanted to build his wall, he was ready to write an executive order. It's, a, it's the ability for the president to almost do what he wants whenever he feels that the time is in chaos, but he has to be careful on what he considers chaos. Okay, so the, the executive order given by Lincoln was in a time of chaos because it was the Civil War and hundreds of thousands of people had already died. He was about to change the lives of four million enslaved African Americans with one order. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he also was the uh, pusher of the 13th Amendment, which declared enslaved, enslaved African Americans free. Uh, this was ratified in 1865. Um, but like I said, once again, it did not make them citizens right away. So the proclamation was directed to all southern states in rebellion at the time. So there were some states that were not fighting, and, and uh, of course the border states. So 
it did not apply to states not in rebellion, which is kind of silly because they were all in rebellion at one point or another, except for the border states. Okay, uh, establishing the ab abolition of slavery was one of two war goals issued by Lincoln at the beginning of this civil war. He realized that freeing the slaves would deter Britain and France from actually getting involved in the war because, let's face it, Britain and France were, France were buying all, this, all the cotton from the South. And uh, by freeing the slaves, Britain and France realized that, that production of cotton would drastically fall Hence, they, they decided to not get involved in the Civil War and found their cotton elsewhere uh, from other countries. Many of Lincoln's advisors definitely were against this whole Emancipation Proclamation. Um, I would guess they were, they were actually against the timing of the Emancipation Proclamation. And uh, eventually, as you can see, he, he orders this decree and... Um, the Union got stronger, were able to actually contend with the Confederacy, and as we get into the Battle of Gettysburg, which I'll put up in a couple of days, um, it was kind of the starting of the fall of the Confederacy and Bobby Lee. So the Emancipation Proclamation, if it did anything, it freed over 400 million, excuse me, 400 million. It freed 4 million enslaved African Americans. Um, it was Lincoln's crowning uh, achievement of his presidency. And, uh, well, soon after the Emancipation Proclamation came Gettysburg and the end of the war soon after at the Apotomix Courthouse. So, the Emancipation Proclamation, one of the biggest proclamations that uh, was probably long overdue, considering the fact that back when we had the revolution, you could have avoided a lot of this by stopping with that we are all men are created equal, yet you have slaves. So anyway, that's the Emancipation Proclamation. As you can see, I cut my hair by myself. It looks uh, pretty darn good, if I would say. Look at that. Okay. And uh, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope that you uh, find time to uh, exercise and spend some time with your family and uh, learn, because we're doing it for a couple more weeks at least. Have a great day. Make sure that you comment uh, underneath the video on YouTube, and if you have not yet, make sure you subscribe. Have a blessed day. Thank you.